All right, we're going to move on to lecture number two here and talk more about what's happening up in your upper respiratory tract. And again, um, the anatomy is going to really be covered over on the anatomy side, which makes sense. But just to kind of review some of your parts, your upper respiratory tract consists of the nasal cavity and the features that you have in there, uh, such as your nasal conchi, which are these folds that you have inside the nasal cavity. Um, obviously, you're breathing in air through the openings in your nose, your nostrils. And uh, that leads to the pharynx. So the pharynx is actually, you know, starts about right in here and extends all the way down here. And it can, it's divided up into three parts. Now, you learned the pharynx in Biology 201 at the beginning of that course, but you may not have learned the three different divisions. So the upper part of it, or the superior part, is called the nasopharynx. And that is the portion that is connecting the nasal cavity to the oropharynx. So the oropharynx is this area behind the tongue um, at the back of your throat. You know, when you swallow food or water and you feel that at the back of your throat behind your tongue, it's in the oropharynx. And then finally, as you go lower from there, you end up at the laryngopharynx. So that's right in here. And that's a little compartment that's going to divide into the esophagus, which is obviously what food and water passes through when you swallow it. And the forward portion, or the anterior feature there, is the larynx, which connects to the trachea. The larynx is uh, at the top portion. That's where your vocal cords are located. And at the lower portion, that's going to lead to the, um, the trachea. And then you have this little flap here, the epiglottis, which when you swallow food and water, that little flap closes over the larynx right there. And hopefully it's going to prevent food and water from traveling down into your larynx and your trachea and causing you to causing you to choke also the oral cavity right in here is also considered to be part of the upper respiratory tract as well all right so as i mentioned on the first video the convention for dividing the upper and the lower respiratory tract is right here at the top of the larynx so everything above that will be part of your upper respiratory tract. All right, so let's talk about the functions of your nose. It does more for you than give you character. Obviously, it's an airway for respiration. Obviously, you can also take in air through your, through your mouth. Um, one of its functions, all right, now think about it. You're breathing in cold air on cold days from the outside. We live in the south, so we don't experience that as much as you would in other parts of the world. But... Um, that helps, the nose helps moisten and warm the entering air. That's another one of those reasons why you have those folds along the, the lateral walls of the nasal cavity, those um, nasal conchi, because that helps kind of circulate and roll the air around inside your nasal cavity, and that helps warm and moisten it. Also, those uh, uh, nose hairs that you have in there, some small and some larger, especially as you get older, and especially if you're a male, uh, help filter and clean the air, helps trap dust and particles and microorganisms. And you got mucus in there. You know, the purpose of the mucus is not just to make boogers. The boogers come from the trapped dust and particles and so forth, many of which are covered in microorganisms, and it's a good idea to trap those types of things in the nose before that air starts heading down towards your lungs. Also, the nose plays a role in speech and helping to um, cause speech sounds. And you guys know that if you hold your nose, your speech sounds differently. So the nose serves as a resonating chamber for speech. Olfactory receptors those are responsible for your sense of smell. So those are nervous tissues that you have up at the superior portion of the nasal cavity down deep inside there. If you remember your skeletal system from Biology 201 and the ethmoid bone that's sitting up there on top of the nasal cavity and has all those little holes in it that was called the cribriform plate. And those holes were opening 
openings for uh, sensory neuron extensions that hang down into the roof of the nasal cavity and are responsible for your sense of smell. And as I mentioned, the nasal conchi uh, provide air turbulence because of that folded shape. It causes the air to swirl around when you inhale it. All right, so your nasal cavity is lined. All right, so mucosa, that's another term for mucous membrane lining. And if you guys remember, you have mucous membrane linings are epithelial tissues throughout the body, and they line spaces, internal spaces, that eventually have some exits to the outside. And you know, the easiest way to remember is that your respiratory, your digestive, your urinary, and your reproductive organs, the inside spaces, are lined with mucosal membranes or mucous membranes. All right, so in the respiratory system, that's going to be called the respiratory mucosa. That's not a surprise. And if you looked at the actual tissue, the epithelial tissue that lines the nasal cavity, it would be pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. So maybe you guys remember that from uh, biology 201. Hopefully that's ringing at least a little bit of a bell for you. Uh, pseudostratified means, pseudostratified columnar um, means the cells are columnar in shape. And if you look at them under the microscope, it looks like you have a stratified tissue. Stratified means in layers, like you'd have more than one layer of cells building that lining. But in reality, they just look that way. It's just one layer of cells, but they're all twisted and gnarled around each other. And so when you look at them under the microscope, it gives you the false impression that you're looking at a stratified or layered type of epithelial tissue. Ciliated means the cells on the surface that is uh, uh, facing the airspace in the nose, also known as a lumen, um, has cilia, those little tiny protein hairs on the surface, and they whip back and forth. They help move mucus along the lining. You do have glands. Uh, we all know this. This secrete mucus fluids. They're called seromucus glands and they're located there within the respiratory mucosa as well. So they're constantly pumping out this fluid and we all know that. Um, so good stuff in that fluid includes lysozyme and defensins. And um, we didn't talk about lysozyme when we went over the immune system, but that is an enzyme that attacks bacteria. And defensins are also proteins, um, which are part of your innate immune system, that also attack many different types of bacteria. So they're obviously not flawless because uh, bacteria that make us sick can uh, break through those defenses, but those two types of weapons that you have in your nasal mucus actually help clear out a lot of the bacteria that you uh, breathe into your nose. The little cilia along the cells, what they do is they actually push the mucus posteriorly toward the throat. I do want to point out spelling. For some reason, mucus, the actual fluid, that sticky nasty fluid, is spelled M-U-C-U-S, whereas a mucus membrane um, that lines a compartment is M-U-C-O-U-S. Don't ask me. Uh, that's just the way it is. <clears throat> so the cilia are actually brushing the fluid toward the back of the throat. Now you may remember from Biology 201 learning that you also have uh, pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial cells that line your trachea and the cilia there push mucus upward because you're trying to move this stuff away from the lungs. The idea in both cases is you push mucus toward the back of your throat and then you'll either cough it out um, or you'll swallow it. And even though that's kind of gross to think about, we swallow mucus all the time. You swallow mucus uh, anytime you swallow uh, food or, or a beverage that you're drinking. And that carries that mucus down into your stomach. And what do we know about your stomach? and the pH there, you know, very acidic, very low pH. So that kills a lot of microorganisms that you have breathed in from the air. They wind up sliding down um, 
kind of like a, uh, a ride to hell down in the <laughs> acid of your stomach and get destroyed there. All right, how does the air get warmed that you're taking in to your nose? Plexuses, that means, that refers to a, a network, like you have plexuses of nerves where you have a lot of networking between um, spinal nerves in different parts of the body. Um, a plexor, you have those choroid plexuses in the brain that produce cerebrospinal fluid. Those are capillary beds. And same thing in your nasal lining. You have networks or capillary beds near the surface that provide a good blood flow to the respiratory mucosa and all that warm blood helps warm up the air that you're breathing in because you don't want cold air making its way down into your lungs and damaging the delicate tissues down in your lungs. That's also why it's really easy to get nosebleeds because you have a lot of capillary beds there along the uh, nasal respiratory mucosa. You also have sensory nerve endings along the respiratory mucosa that will trigger when they become irritated they trigger sneezing and that helps you get rid of particles and dust and microbes and pollen and things like that that you have breathed in that you need to get rid of. All right, I went over this already, but here's a diagram from your textbook which is highlighting the oops, the borders for you of the nasopharynx, oropharynx, and laryngopharynx. Do learn the pathway of airflow. So air is coming in through the nares into the nasal cavity and then it passes into the nasopharynx, oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx on its way to the lungs. The next thing it's going to do is have to pass through here into the larynx and down into the trachea on its way toward the lungs. So keep in mind that airflow pathway. That's one of the things that's important to learn here in this unit. Okay, so uh, for lecture number three, we're going to keep moving on um, beyond the, the different parts of the pharynx and down into the larynx and the trachea. And while we're in the larynx, we're going to spend a couple of moments talking about your vocal cords, since that's another one of the functions of that part of your respiratory system.